and how you, oh yeah, the Zoom lady, uh, how you can uh, use it for the advancement of your career and research. Uh, but before uh, starting, here is um, here's some information, like some housekeeping information for you for today. As the Zoom lady already reminded us for that, uh, the webinar will be and is recorded. So if you prefer not to be recorded, you can switch off your camera and uh, you can use the chat only for um, interactions. Speaking of which, um, there will be a question and answer session at the end of the webinar, and you are very welcome to um, uh, speak up during this part, but also in the meantime, we highly encourage you to use the Zoom chat for any questions, comments, practical remarks, uh, even possible technical remarks uh, on the way. Um, so that's, that's that. Um, please let us know if you have any questions, difficulties in the meantime. Um, as usual, um, the recordings of the session will be shared. So also those who cannot make it uh, live today can follow up uh, with the webinar. Um, and just another thing before we uh, zoom in today's topic, uh, I also want to give you a little bit of a reminder about the upcoming events. Uh, of the series. So you can see two very interesting webinars coming up from uh, around the triple project. Uh, one of them having to do with multilingual vocabularies in the social sciences and humanities by Dan Broder and his colleagues. Um, and the another one will be dedicated to another uh, research research support tool, the Pundit annotation tool uh, presented by or introduced by uh, Luca DeSantis from Net7. Um, to learn more about this upcoming events, uh, you're very welcome to visit the website of the triple trainings, or you can simply uh, keep yourself updated by following um, triple on Twitter, if you have a Twitter account. Mm, but so um, I think uh, we can now uh, start getting closer to today's topic. Um, here is a little expectation management for you for the coming one and a half hours. Uh, so what to expect today? Um, what's happening right now is I'm giving you a gentle welcome um, to the session. Um, and uh, after I stop talking, um, then uh, Maxime and Gael, our speakers for today, whom I'm going to introduce uh, very soon, um, are going to introduce you the trust building system uh, for about um, half an hour. We are very flexible with the timeframes here. Uh, and very importantly, this introduction session will be followed by a um, hands-on part um, of the webinar in which uh, we are going to test the trust building system live um, and then provide a kind of um, live demo, which is always the um, exciting parts of, of, of such events. Um, this will happen uh, primarily with the help of a um, dedicated group of testers. So Paula, Forbes, Richard, Dennis, Alessia, Lotti, and myself will be the testers. We are going to introduce ourselves uh, properly uh, at this point. And then the live testing takes place and um, the final 10, 15 minutes we are going to dedicate to a wrap up and a Mentimeter feedback form. So this is um, the what we prepared with for today. Um, and so it's very timely now to introduce the speakers of today's event who are uh, who are like the, uh, very invested in the development uh, of the trust building service. Uh, Gael from Weyenberg, co-founder of Mayo, and Maxim Bouillon, uh, also co-founder of the company. Um, just a little interesting uh, information about the company. This is a not-for-profit um, web development company. Mm -hmm. And uh, I uh, also did some research to learn uh, what the acronym MIO stands for. Um, and uh, it's a surprisingly elegant and very humanistic friendly uh, concept. It stands for many embers, one heart is felt 
And if you, uh, if uh, this line is uh, familiar to you, it's no um, surprise because uh, this is a famous quote from Dante's um, Divine Comedy. Uh, so I think that's all about the background. That's all about our speakers today. And probably at this point, I will be very happy to give the floor to you, Gael and Maxim. Hello everybody, thanks for joining us today. So I will start by introducing myself and about Gael and uh, about the testers afterwards. So as Elizabeth uh, already introduced me, my name is Maxime. I'm a French citizen. I'm based in Brussels in Belgium, working for Mio, many embryos one hit, uh, as Elizabeth said. And what brought me to design, to co-design with Gael, you know, the trust building system. I spent most of my career you know, at the European Commission dealing with various crises. And today, you know, we have the Ukrainian crisis and I used to work you know, with the financial crisis in Greece, Portugal and other countries. And what struck me at that time was that coordination among uh, stakeholders was not the best. And that many resources were lost because many people had answers to some problems, but you know, the hierarchical system of the governance made that only the top people were discussing among themselves and were not using all of the resources and knowledge that all citizens had or co-workers. And so we, with Gael, we thought about creating a trust building system to kind of uh, put people to, to, to kind of connect people who could rely on some uh, specific expertise together to have more chance you know, to bring solutions to various problems. So we designed this trust building uh, system. So now, how did we design it? So we joined the TRIPLE project, and TRIPLE is a European funded project which aims at connecting researchers among themselves uh, beyond their usual uh, silo, you know, their usual bubble, say economists work with economists, you know, uh, uh, archaeologists work with archaeologists, and so on. So that people kind of work across uh, disciplines and also beyond the social and humanities bubble if they can reach investors you know, to finance a project or policy makers to influence policies or cultural uh, centers to, you know, to fuel them with ideas and, and, and various expertise. So within this triple project, we co-design the trust building system through a series of eight uh, workshops involving more than 50 participants, mostly uh, SSH researchers, but also policy makers, uh, journalists, uh, NGOs, and uh, you know, various stakeholders outside of the research club. So what kind of workshop did we host to co-design this uh, trust building system where we asked the question, how should the profile look like? So, it's, so the trust building system is like a matchmaking platform or social media, you, know, you can put it the way you want. And people said, well, when we meet people in order to know who they are, you know, the profile should, be, should, have, should have a human touch. So in this trust building system, which later on we will invite you to test and join uh, if you're willing to, you know, the profile, uh, you know, features some lines such as, you know, soft skills, what is my magic, what is my passion, what is my dream, what do I want to contribute at, which goes beyond, you know, the usual art skills. I'm Maxime, I'm uh, one major 83, uh, I'm working in Brussels, uh, you know, like uh, a bit of dry data. So we did a workshop on the prof to be uh, held in a uh, position. Uh, you know, we want like the open science to be reflected in there. And so we, we people, you know, shared a set of values which help design some community, community guidelines which are open and dynamic and uh, which are um, called to, to evolve over time and to adjust to the reality of, of today's world. We, we had another, um, another workshop on the need and the purpose of the trust building system. And their people mostly shared that, well, sometime when I don't know an answer to a question, I talk to my friends and I'm quite reluctant to do cold calls to people I don't know. And so this workshop led us to, for instance, design a function which is uh, called introduce, meaning say today is Ukrainian crisis and I'm a French researcher uh, and I want to help Ukrainian researcher, but I don't know any. So through the trust building system, you can post a request. I want to help Ukrainian researchers. Is there a possibility? Does anybody know about it? 
And actually, it's a real request. I posted on the trust building system, and uh, one of my trusted contacts uh, informed me that some people in the CNRS in France, you know, had some ideas about it. And my grandmother is Ukrainian, so you know, I'm related to this, uh, to this topic. So that's why I, it was a real request uh, from my heart. And I got some feedback. You know, I get, oh, you can help them through this way or that way. Thanks to the trust building system, within two hours, I had, uh, I had an answer. Uh, so we conducted like several uh, other workshops, which if you have questions, we are happy to detail. We also uh, conducted a survey with more than uh, 200, uh, 800 participants, you know, what are the best practices? How do you want to interact with people by phone, by email, by social media? And then we could see some uh, discrepancies between you know, generation, young people who really use emails, uh, people who are a bit less uh, young, you know, only want to use email. So we try to take into consideration, you know, the what people expressed to design a tool that could work for the majority of people, uh, provided that they use internet. Because you know, some people are still reluctant to use internet, but the trust building system is a desktop-based uh, uh, matchmaking platform. It also has a mobile version, you know, that people who have a, who have a smartphone can use on their smartphone, and so overall, to conclude, what the trust build them, what does the trust building system does? Uh, it basically it helps people. It, it acts as a social bridge, you know, to connect people who have a need to the people who have the resources, whether you know them, you know them directly or if through somebody you know, you relay your information and your request, and kind of by online word of mouth, you will get your answer. And now I will stop uh, talking, perhaps, and maybe Gail, you want to complement what I just uh, introduced? Uh, before, sorry, before Gail uh, starts speaking, uh, do you want me to reshare the slide deck? So would you like to use uh, my version or would you like to share your own screens? We um, will use the slide a bit later on and I think Gail will share. Ah, okay, that. sorry then. It might be easier for the management. So hello everyone. My name is uh, Gail Van Uyenberg. I'm uh, living here in Brussels. I'm a co-founder of Mio with Maxime. My background is in political science. Uh, but I never practice uh, professionally. So I was instead uh, active in uh, social entrepreneurship networks. And uh, my task was to bridge uh, unmet uh, resources uh, with unmet needs. And so it was basically it was uh, in the matchmaking business um, just to help um, social entrepreneurs to connect uh, with other people uh, around. And uh, um, I met uh, Suzanne Dumouchel, so the head of the uh, Go Triple project, um, during one of the uh, EU meetings. And uh, I was talking about trust and uh, the emotional connection between people and how it is important uh, in, uh, when people meet with one another. And uh, she was uh, seduced by that, uh, that idea. And, um, and, and so we uh, went on board the GoTriple project to uh, provide one of the innovative services of the GoTriple platform, which is the TBS or, or trust building system. And so it's like Maxim said, it's a matchmaking platform um, and the focus is really on trust. So um, obviously you can post a request on any other type of uh, social platform or social media, but here, um, the idea is really to focus on the on qualitative connections. So uh, the network is private. It's by invitation only. So the person who invites a new uh, member put its credibility uh, at stake. Um, new um, matchmaking are triangulated by a trusted peer, a common trusted peer. So uh, like Maxim said uh, as well, uh, people are reluctant to make uh, cold calls to uh, uh, other uh, um, people. So uh, it, the, the best, and we made basically uh, several workshops and, uh, and and the best type of interaction is when somebody is introduced by, by somebody who's trusted. Uh, so we thought that um, instead of, uh, focusing on, on dissemination and uh, connecting anyone to everyone, 
that obviously has a trade-off in terms of uh, the quality of relationship. And you may think about LinkedIn, there is that 500 plus button uh, or, or, or a signal. Uh, so you may know who is in your network, but as I browse your own network, I don't know if you know that person well or not at all. Um, so here, the idea with the, uh, the TBS is that we have really small private networks uh, that are human sized. So, less than 150 people, uh, meaning that it's really heavily curated. Uh, we believe that every person who will on, on board the TBS will be somebody who's really trusted by the people who invited them. So um, the, uh, the relationship will, will be of high quality. Um, and so that's, that is really the focus that we want to do. And uh, we made, uh, we asked a question uh, during one of the workshops, uh, because everybody's got unmet needs uh, in their professional life. I need to meet that partner. Uh, and it's especially uh, important these days, as science is getting more and more uh, transversal, you need to connect to uh, end users, uh, civil society or municipalities for research projects, etc. And these people do not use the code of uh, uh, academic people. So we need some kind of new type of interaction. And um, it's also meant to leverage the informal uh, connections that we have. Um, so I know some people from academia, but I also know some people from business or uh, from um, other sphere of society. And uh, when I hear that someone has got a, a specific request, I can easily forward that request in, within my private network. And uh, so we asked the question to workshop participant, what is your need? What is your unmet need? And they were stating X, Y, Z. And then we were asking other participants, do you know someone who could help answering that need? And I would say 100% of the time, uh, we had a positive answer. Uh, and we uh, even had like a, a real uh, use case where someone in Africa was asking to connect to uh, social uh, entrepreneurs in, in Europe. And within two minutes, we just like uh, made a successful match. So, and that person was waiting for more than two years to uh, to get in touch with someone. So it it might have some uh, some uh, real use case um, value, and um, maybe um, we can show a bit of slides because talking is good, but uh, images are better. Um, I'm gonna share my screen. And, uh, let me see. Can I share everything? Yeah, so on the on the slide, okay. Yeah, now we see it. So, so may, Maxim, maybe you want to comment? Yeah. So now we will just so use a desktop version, so the version you can have uh, on a computer of the trust building system, because there is also a mobile version of the trust building system. So now it's the desktop, so the computer version of the trust building system. So when you come, you need to log in. You know, you have your credential, you know, username, password. And you, you, you land, now you can see on the left, I can't really show with my, you know, with a mouse, but you have the, the Gael space is on my network. So it's the people that Gael has invited direct, people he really knows in real life, unlike LinkedIn that sometimes you accept people you don't really know. Here you only have people you really know who you've been recommended personally by friends. And so in this network, you can invite peers uh, in this online environment. It's like a prolongation of real offline, life of the life that you have, you know, not uh, online, but in your real life. You can keep on the conversation here. For instance, I will give an example. I will take a very easy example. Say I'm looking for a dentist and, you know, I ask my friend around and I'm new to the city and nobody knows. Uh, well, I should take the SSH researcher example, but I take the dentist, you know, to make it very easy. And whereas here on the TBS, I could say, could somebody that in my, among my friends, you know, know a dentist in Brussels? And somebody might recommend me a, a dentist. So again, you should translate to SSH research, and I just took the dentist example uh, out of my mind. And afterwards, you can, for the dentist, for instance, you know, now I just went to a page where you can post your request. So now we see that Suzanne Du Michel, who is the head of the Triple Project, if you know about it, you know, uh, actually a few months ago, she 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 posted a request that Operas, you know, was looking to open an office in Brussels. So she can post a request, she can put a picture, she has a title, she can uh, put the text, you know, give a lot, lot of details about it. And there people can either uh, forward the request 
to their entire network, or they can forward it only to specific people in their own network, or they can answer that address direct user request if themselves they want to help. Or... And because you forward the request to people you know, it's more likely that you will have engagement and an answer. But if you put, post it on Facebook, people are like, uh, you know, yet another post and people don't really engage. Here, the TBS, Trust Building System, is meant to foster engagement of the community. And, and now, you know, uh, Gail just showed the introduce function, meaning Suzanne, it's a real case, you know. So Suzanne was looking for uh, setting up the Opera's office in Brussels, and Gail was more in touch between Suzanne than I was with Suzanne. And you know, Gail knows that I've been in touch, I've, I've, been, uh, I've been myself, I had to set up some offices in Brussels, so I had to deal with your content, you know, to find room and stuff like that. So Gail introduced me to Suzanne, and then I was in direct contact with Suzanne, I recommend her, I, I, you know, I helped her, uh, I put her in touch actually with some uh, valuable contacts, a content, how to find an office, and um, several other, uh, you know, uh, details of her, of her request. So you can make the personal introduction, which is which avoids to make like cold calls, as it's uh, stated in the in the title. And because you know, Gail put Suzanne in, in touch, I was like, okay, Gail, who's my partner in business, I really want to help him. So if he asks me to help Suzanne, I will do it like today or tomorrow. It's not like a request I will have pending on my desk for three months because I'm like, who is it? who is this Suzanne Jimuchel? So that's the big added value of the introduce function, which everybody in the workshop. Uh, you know, was praising and loved. And then beyond that, you can also create like a group, specific group of interest. I mean, it's kind of a chat group. For instance, I had, I was in a group, you know, with Suzanne and I added to the group, you know, Benjamin Karnak with somebody uh, like the EEN, you know, the national contact point in Brussels for the EU project. And he had lots of uh, useful advice for Suzanne. So instead of asking the question myself to, uh, Benjamin and making the bridge with Suzanne. I just created a chat group where I put Benjamin and Suzanne together and they were chatting together. And because they didn't know each other, but I was also in the group, I was acting kind of as, as, a, as, a, as a guarant, you know, that Suzanne would be serious and Benjamin would be serious. I was not participating in, into the conversation, but because I was there, it was kind of reassuring between the two of them and says there, there would be any misunderstanding and, you know, I was here to help. I was passive, but I could have been active very easily if it had been required. So it, that's the whole uh, point of those uh, chat groups, of specific interest groups. You can call them the way you want. And now we, we jump to the notification page, which means that basically every time you receive a request or a message from somebody, you know, just like you have on WhatsApp, Signal, or in your uh, email inbox, you just get uh, uh, a notification, you know, in your mailbox that you can go and check. And I think that already a quick overview of the trust building system, there are many more functionalities, but uh, I think it's easier if you, have, if you want to know more about it, either that you ask question or that you join it, it's for free to test it if you're interested. And uh, from there on, you know, to discover it and to provide your feedback because we are still in a early development stage. And so every feedback is very useful because the product doesn't is not very useful if it doesn't match you know the needs of the users. So all feedbacks are always be welcome and every question as well. But before we jump to our testers, perhaps Gail, you want to summarize the little presentation we did? Yes. So um, as a recap, uh, we really want to streamline the experience of uh, finding reliable partners. Um, we know that this yet another social network um, and nobody uh, wants to uh, register to a, a new one. However, here it's like extremely specialized and it's part of the GoTriple platform. So you can easily uh, onboard to the TBS once you have a, uh, an account uh, on the GoTriple platform. Um, and so just like to uh, uh, use some, uh, some comparison, um, Instagram told us that we are uh, all photographers and, and Twitter told us that we are all bloggers. Uh, here the TBS uh, tells us that uh, we are all social bridges. And um, we are literally um, swimming in an ocean of solutions that are one handshake away. And um, 
there are two ways to find uh, resources. Either uh, you go and browse through a database, uh, but then you have to make that famous uh, cold call, uh, or you uh, post your request and you ask your trusted peers if they know someone and if they can uh, uh, bridge you to uh, the person who can uh, provide the resources. Um, and that's the fundamental idea uh, behind the, the TBS. And uh, yes, maybe uh, we want to uh, introduce our uh, testers now. Maybe, maybe Arjebet, you want to ask the testers to introduce themselves? Yes, thanks a lot, really a lot to both of you for this uh, insightful introduction. So now with an awareness of what the trust building system is, what are the underlying values, functionalities, uh, Yes, I would like to invite uh, our dream team uh, of testers uh, to introduce yourself. And we also enabled you to share your screen. So I think we can achieve some sort of a double efficiency here. Uh, please introduce yourself. And if you prefer, uh, by the same go, you are also very welcome to present um, your use case that you prepared in advance for the trust building system. Uh, so and, and um, last but not least, I realized that I completely forgot to introduce myself at the um, beginning of our session. So uh, as a final round of the introduction, I will do that as well. Uh, but before getting there, let's see, Paolo, I want you first to introduce yourself, please. Hi, I'm Paula Forbes. Um, I'm a researcher at the University of Abertay, which is in Scotland. Um, some of you might have come along. I ran the last triple training session, which was about uh, the importance of user-centered design. Um, but I've been here just trying out the new trust building system. Um, so I had a chat with Gail um, about a week ago because uh, I was quite new to this. Um, so he explained how great it was and uh, how to go about signing up and putting a, a post on. Because uh, in Triple, we're always looking for new participants to take part in various things. Um, so my post was actually about looking for people who are interested um, in being interviewed about the governance process of the GoTriple platform. Um, so I made a post. I don't know if I can just let me check how I can share my screen here. Okay. Oh, or you fun. can and or you are also welcome to uh, link your post uh, in the chat. Okay. Can you see that? Yes, yeah. okay. perfect. That's, that was my post here. So um, I noticed this morning when I went on, I had some replies. Um, so both Maxine and Gail have kindly volunteered to, to uh, take part in those. Um, so I have some chats underneath, which is good. And I noticed it had been shared quite a few times as well. So I could see that people had passed on this message that might have been shared because I have quite a small network with being new. Um, so hopefully, you know, people will be sharing that in the similar way to what would happen on Twitter. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure what the, maybe you can explain what the little kind of metric at the end, there's a number 12 there with a the little graph. Is that the activity, total activity or something? Yeah. Great, so I could see it's been reshared eight times. I have like four comments and uh, the, the total activity there, I suppose that's where it adds up to 12. And um, so, yeah, I think it's great so far. I've been uh, I'm looking to expand my network. I had a quick question. How do I contact new people to add them to my network? Okay, so you do have on top right, uh, the invite uh, button it looks like an envelope. Okay, yeah. Here. You can invite from the send invitation. Great, so I would do that. So so that one was to Maxime, I think. Um, so then if I would need to know people's emails, so I'd enter it here and press invite. Correct. Okay, brilliant, that's me. Um, so I'll not keep you any longer. I'll let everybody else share what they've been doing. Um, but thanks very much. I'll stop sharing now, hang on. This was awesome, Paula, thanks a lot. Uh, very insightful and I really enjoyed that you uh, already managed to uh, include some of your reflections. Um, of course, at a later stage, I suspect we will have time to, um, to come back to them in more depth. But uh, next station of our screen hopping journey will be introduced by Alessia. Alessia, the floor is yours. 
Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, I'm Alessia Smagnotto, working for Open Edition and uh, Operas, and I'm the project coordination manager of a research project uh, on citizen science and social science and the humanities that is called COESO. That's for my presentation. And uh, how I'd been introduced on the TBS, uh, Gael invited me and uh, I'm playing the, the bad pupil here because I didn't uh, uh, understood the exercise at all. So I just discovered the TBS yesterday and um, I'm the skeptical in the room also because I'm not so sure that it is working. And um, and then what I have done so far, I have uh, just uh, filled in my profile and um, I put the same information that I have um, kind of every social network I'm in uh, with all the basic information, my, my links to my website. Uh, I was forced a little bit to put my picture I wish to make a fake one, but I was suggested not to. And um, in my newsfeed, there is not so much things. So it's not convincing me at all. And then my network, there is all, also ga only Gael because I did, haven't yet understood how it works. So now I know that I can invite people by <laughs> clicking on, the, on this letter and that they thought it was about messaging, but now I know that is for inviting people. And uh, that's all for me. This is really great. I think uh, it's super important to, to have a, a balanced picture and probably at this point, Gal and Maxime are really, really hungry for that kind of honest feedback. So thanks a lot, uh, Alessia and, and uh, uh, yes, David Ascent and uh, uh, please uh, continue to uh, to contribute to the discussion later on. And now I'm giving the floor to Richard or Richard. Sorry for my pronunciation. I think Richard is not here today. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. Never mind. Then my safer bet will be Lottie. Thank you, Elspeth. Hi, everyone. So I'm a French uh, fellow researcher at the Italian National Research Council in Pisa. And my work mainly revolves around the promotion and implementation of open science practices for SSH researchers mostly. And in the triple project, I'm involved in the work package on open science and EOSC integration. And within this task, I also work on the verification of training materials, that being how to make resources mostly accessible and reusable. I'm also a member of the editorial committee of the Italian Open Science Portal, which was released a few months ago. And as you can see, this kind of work requires to find collaborators quite often. So, so sometimes just to give you a hand with something now. So I can share my screen to show you how I tried to use the TBS. So I registered last week and posted a few requests. Wait a second here. Okay, can you see my screen? I'd say so. Yes. Good. Uh, so here you can see, yes, we're writing a, a paper within the, within the project. So we're looking for collaborators who have inputs or who'd like to collaborate on writing this paper. Also, we're looking for panelists for a future online seminar. And for example, with the, I thought I could try here uh, to ask this question. We've created the Twitter accounts for the Open Science Portal, but we have a side of small audience for the moment. So we're wondering on who has strategies to reach more stakeholders. So I like the fact that to post uh, a request, it's very easy, it's just a few steps. My question was, and they have actually quite answered uh, uh, Paula as well, is that um, me too, I have quite a small network. So I, I am part of a group on the training session here. But I can't see the news from Paula, for example. I can only see Elspeth. And um, I'm wondering, so maybe I should need to increase my network a bit more because for the moment I have no answers. And uh, that's the tour de table on what I've been doing with the TBS. Thanks so much, Lottie. And perhaps before we address all questions, 
and uh, comments on the feedback. Maybe Erzebet, did you try yourself as well the TBS bit? Yes, uh, I, uh, I'm kind of multitasking at this point of the webinar, let's put it that way. So uh, I'm not only moderating it, but also, uh, also function as uh, or contribute as one of the, one of the testers. Um, so as I mentioned uh, already, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Ashley Betul-Cifra. I am the Open Science Officer of the European Research Infrastructure Consortium, DARIA. Um, as it's a um, uh, research EU Research Infrastructure Consortium for Digitally Enabled Arts and Humanities. And we are one of the um, partners of the consortium who are building the triple platform. Um, and my work involves implementing open science policies and practices, specifically as they make sense in research realities in the arts and humanities. So that's about me. I'm a linguist uh, by profession. So um, I did my PhD in uh, corpus linguistics. And um, among other things, uh, I have um, working group at Doria dedicated to research data management for humanists and um, research support, data management support roles working in arts and humanities domains. And so um, it was really important for me when testing the TBS last week is to try to fill it up with as realistic, as accurate, as less fake data as possible. So uh, eventually, I'm really looking forward to how this little experiment um, is, um, is, is turning out to be, uh, whether I will be able to eventually find new members to this working group, whether they are practicing arts and humanities researcher practitioners from any of the disciplines belonging under this big umbrella, or whether they are uh, research support professionals, you know, you have these new roles, data stewards, open science officers, subject librarians and the like, uh, or cultural heritage professionals are also welcome. And um, keeping in mind that um, the social uptake of this platform is still limited, uh, keeping in mind that it's still in development, so no surprise, I was primarily interested in what happens if I just enter my data here, but no, but refuse to engage into any further forms of, you know, engagement, networking, whatever, uh, whether anything will happen to my entry here. And you can see that um, uh, it did happen. So it's been retweeted once, it's been endorsed a couple of times. Maybe a practical feedback to you, Maxime and Gael. Uh, since it's a new platform with similar, but like uh, not completely um, like alien, but uh, still new functionalities, maybe it would be nice if we could just click on these, you know, and they would give us a little bit more information about what these symbols mean. I have an idea, but not 100% sure myself. Um, as you could see, you are also able to set up groups uh, to expand your networks. Uh, it was also an interesting exercise to click on my newsfeed and see the now familiar faces at a later stage of development, possibly uh, also unfamiliar faces. So that can be a room for serendipitousness as well. Um, I have some questions to myself, more generic questions about the platform, about um, expected uptake, and probably even more importantly, about how the 3BS system will be integrated with the triple platform. But I think as a um, host of this webinar, uh, the polite way uh, to proceed would be to control my curiosity at this point and open the floor to the rest of our attendees because uh, we've, we've, we've been discussing for like uh, 45, about 45 minutes now. I think at this point, I would prefer just 
to open up the floor to the audience at large. Many, many thanks uh, to our tester group. I think uh, uh, all of you provided super interesting insights to the audience and feedback to the developers. And um, I also put the link to the trust building system to the chat. So if you just arrived to the webinar, if you're completely new to this, um, here is your chance to get your hands on it, uh, take it to test drive, but now we are also listening to your questions and comments. Yes, and I, uh, before really, um, before, like I, I can also see like uh, comments in the chat, can we please have the invitation code? Yeah, maybe it's a bit uh, tricky. Yeah, Gael, I see that your hand is up. Yes, actually you need an invitation code. Yeah, sorry for that. I completely forgot about that. And uh, one, one little thing, just like to precise, we are still in the lab. So yeah. the, the platform is not really live. Uh, so uh, if you do not have many people in your network, if you don't see much activity, uh, it's normal. Uh, I mean, uh, the platform will be live at the end uh, of the GoTriple project, so it's like in a, in a year time. So we still have one year just like to uh, improve the user experience, uh, take the feedback like you uh, give us to us today, uh, very valuable, and, uh, and improve it and just like make it uh, uh, more integrated with the GoTriple platform and have it like uh, uh, being really useful. Useful. So for now, I understand it's a bit like of a guinea pig type of situation, uh, but yeah, that's where we are right now. Very, very early stage. Thank you. Yeah, I think this is important to highlight, but uh, 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 people are requesting access via the chat. I think it's a good, you can take it as a good sign of uh, interest uh, already. And uh, I see a question from Lorena, who is Deeply speaking from my heart, because uh, she's asking uh, how the TBS will be integrated into Go Triple. So, go to, for the newcomers, so Go Triple, the platform, as far as I, uh, I'm aware at least, is uh, going to be a data and publication discovery platform in the first place um, where uh, people will be able to find information about research data research publications, researchers themselves, and research projects. So publications in a broad sense, people and project, this 3P are really the flagship um, basis of data model of triple. Um, so what's the, what's, what, what, what are the synergies? What are the possible relationships you see uh, with the GoTiPro platform and TBS? Is this for me? Um, you can, I mean, it's to both of you, you can decide which one of you will, 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 will start. Yeah, just I talk, Gail, and I will see complement is useful. I followed the technical part a bit more than Maxime. So mm -hmm. um, it's not an integrated service of the GoTriple platform, it's more a federated service of the GoTriple platform. So uh, the technical challenges have been huge. Um, and uh, we are not the uh, organization who integrate the TBS into uh, GoTriple. Um, however, for now, we're going to start with uh, like a, a minim minimum uh, viable solution, uh, which is to um, integrate uh, the notification stream of the TBS within the larger uh, notification system of the GoTriple platform. Uh, you would be able to connect to the TBS, which will open a new tab on your desktop right from your um, GoTriple profile. Uh, and also you will, uh, the GoTriple platform will display some uh, important metrics uh, of activity uh, from the TBS. Uh, in the future, we might have like an EGI check-in, uh, which will help to connect in one click uh, uh, you to the various services um, of GoTriple, including the TBS. And, um, there is like uh, it's still an, an open field uh, as we uh, will also have a uh, crowdfunding platform as another innovative service 
Uh, and I think that the TBS will uh, be more uh, valuable uh, once the uh, crowdfunding platform is as well integrated into the GoTripper platform, because you will be able to interact with other stakeholders like end users uh, and, and add them into the conversation for your research project and, and show that you have activity and, and, uh, and become attractive to uh, people who want to uh, fundraise your, uh, your, your project. And also one of the advantages that I see right now is that being a standalone next to the uh, GoTripper platform, the TBS uh, uh, and the Mio app will uh, have uh, an, an inflow of uh, users that will uh, be connected to the uh, GoTripper users. So it's like two ecosystems uh, um, connecting uh, one to another. Thanks a lot, Gab, for this, uh, for this comprehensive answer. Uh, I also see hands up from Carla. Please feel free to speak up, Carla. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. So thank you for the presentation and also for the testing, which is fantastic, I think. Uh, we were in contact with um, Emily and, and GoTripo uh, because we are running an Erasmus Plus project in which we have a, a kind of... Uh, a group of people uh, and uh, potential other stakeholders which we um, wanted to keep connected and we thought that GoTripal and uh, now that you presented the, the TBS system uh, is an extremely powerful mean to um, uh, make a, a group of interest, a, a group of uh, people who are uh, more or less connected with a project uh, or um, uh, with a field of interest. Our specific field of interest is ancient written documents and digital uh, technologies applied to, to ancient writings. So it is a kind of uh, large but limited community which has connections, however, uh, with other kind of groups, uh, uh, as you can imagine, digital humanities, of course, uh, but also communities working with the different uh, languages and the ancient objects written in different languages. So my question is, um, uh, looking at, at the testing that you presented, uh, it's not very clear uh, to me how uh, different groups uh, can uh, overlap. I mean, if uh, I'm managing my network of contacts, uh, in which way can I uh, connect groups or people in groups to, to which I'm belonging uh, that I think could uh, make a good synergy together? Great question. Um... I really love this question because it's like uh, from the infrastructure point of view, it's important, but from the user experience, you might not, you know, feel a very big difference. Uh, but it was like some design choice that we had to make. Your network is private. Uh, and so if you create a group, uh, a specific interest group, you become the administrator of that group. And you can invite other people to become themselves administrator. And these people can invite members within that group that are not part of your network. So it's a way just like to overlap, like you say, different type of uh, uh, private networks. And you can invite uh, uh, people from straight from these groups. So if you see someone who makes great contribution uh, within that, that conversation, you can uh, easily invite them straight from that group. And in uh, just like because you're talking about overlap, we do have another function, which is like um, not in many other social networks. Uh, we do have the feature uh, function. So if you go onto a profile of someone in your network, you can feature that person, meaning that um, other people in, in the next degree, in the next degree of social connections will be able to see uh, their publications and their posts. So uh, if there is some kind of interest, if some people um, might be able to answer uh, the request, they can come to you uh, uh, and resolve the request. So we, it's like a, a network of interdependence. Um, you return favors to uh, one another. Uh, 
and that creates like some social glue and and uh, and and um, cooperation. I, I think is is really great, and uh, I'm really looking forward to, to to when we could test that and uh, hopefully use that. Uh, yeah. I, I think you mentioned some dates, but uh, I'm sorry, I lost them. Would it be in one year that we can yeah, probably I mean, we, test it or use it? We, I mean, we have to be like a, have a professional grade uh, uh, release uh, in, in one year. However, we need people uh, who are okay to uh, work on an environment that's not very great. Uh, and so if you're um, excited to join us, we are more than welcome because we need some kind of a hardcore adopter, early adopters who uh, agree just like to deal with like uh, stuff that do not work really well for the moment uh, while we improve the, the, the network. So uh, you're welcome to join uh, as soon as you want. Thank you. And if I make compliments, sorry, go on, Carla. You want to talk, Carla? Just to thank you and uh, and maybe ask you how we can uh, uh, be part of uh, of the testing. Yeah, thanks a lot, Cara. Perhaps I will address that question there because I have a few compliments. So, Elgebet, you know, posted uh, the link of the TBS in uh, the chat. But if you just go on it, or somebody asks, you need like a code because you can only join it upon invitation. So, for instance, Elgebet can invite you, you know. And then she can introduce you, for instance, to Gail or to me. And meanwhile, I will address Lotis' question on how can I invite people? So you have the envelope, as Gail stated, you know, in the uh, top right corner. And then you can already invite whoever you, you want to invite in your network. And Gail, correct me if I'm wrong, because we had to change and adapt you know, the design of the truth building system uh, based on, uh, you know, because of the desires and other technical possibility. But each group is still limited to 144 people, Gail. Maybe you can explain why it's limited to 144 if it's still the case. Well, uh, the network is limited to 144. So you cannot invite more people than 144. And there is a reason for that, if you want to talk about that. Uh, but for the groups, there is no limit to how many people you can add within a group. Good to know. OK, uh, thanks a lot to both of you. Uh, yes, I think uh, after the webinar, we will be able to sort out this uh, invitation uh, to make sure that uh, you can easily be added to this tester community. And I also see another hands up from uh, Alessia. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Because as far as the, the, the service is uh, still in development, oh, this is very clear. Oh, we are not expecting that all is, uh, is completed, but uh, so you are uh, um, also working on the communication and uh, the way you present the project. It, it is really part of the building of the service. So I continue to play my, my role of the skeptical in the room and I try to challenge <laughs> challenge you with the, the communication description, the description you made about your, your service. So you, you talk a lot about uh, building trust among people. The, the social network is, uh, is built around trust. It is private. And this is your core description. So what do you think if I uh, suggest that this model uh, is kind of like uh, either the Royal Tennis Club or uh, the, the, the living room uh, of the 19th century that was built up around aristocracy. Because in these two cases, you arrive in a closed environment, closed social network that is not specifically private because uh, closed social network are public fashion, but it's just, they are just limited in number, but it is something public, it's not completely private. So what do you think about this kind of description? And it came to my mind also because uh, I'm seeing what uh, the people here is asking to enter the network. So they have to, to make an effort that can be big or, or not uh, regarding their uh, situation or their position to enter the network. If you are not invited, they have to ask permission. So what about this kind of description? I don't know, Gail, if you want to, I can address it, or Gail can address it. Maybe we have 
both of us two ways to address it. What I could say perhaps at first is, you know, in your network, do you trust anybody you trust in the street? And do you, are you willing to engage with anyone you meet in the street? Or do you prefer to have a feeling of whether you can trust people or not? So the network is based on cohesion. You know, to, have, to be efficient, you know, it's a professional network to help reach another stage, you know, to, to solve a request. And that's why cohesion and engagement are strong. And you have a, if you have a network with 5,000 people, you don't really know who is who, you don't know who you can trust, you know, and, and for instance, you think about uh, Ukraine right now, you know, you don't know if there are Russian spies or if there are really Ukrainian people. So if you bring everybody in, it's likely that your project won't be successful because it will be watered down by people who are not motivated, who even would work against you. Say competitors, if you have a competitive, compet uh, another university, they don't want you to succeed, you know, so they might play some tricks. I come from policy making, so you know it's like a spice world and lots of tricks and stuff. And, and we've been working with a lot of universities, and you have lots of business and lobbies often associated to universities to research, which is sponsored by pharmaceutical companies or whoever. And I'm just giving examples on how to be successful and to know who is in your family, in your network. And uh, that's just my way to address it. And perhaps Gail, you want to contribute, but first of all, thanks a lot, uh, Alicia, for. The question and Shannon Ligas, and if it's not clear, we are happy to make it clearer that, that to push us to be even more clear. Gael, do you want to complement? Yes, so um, two things. Uh, one, um, the, the pain of onboarding the TBS. Um, so normally speaking, you are invited. So there is zero uh, effort to join because uh, we pick you when, when, we, when we believe that we can put you in touch with somebody uh, uh, who might help you or you might help a, a person. So uh, the, the normal way to join the TBS is to receive an invitation. So there is, you're not, and again, today uh, for the uh, exercise that we're doing now, I mean, you post in the chat, but we don't know uh, you. Uh, um, so um, normally we just invite people that we know and the, the growth will be organic over time. Uh, so one, once again, the, the very first days are the more, more difficult for us um, because we need to uh, reach a viable threshold of uh, participation in order that the system uh, uh, fuels itself. Um, there will, however, be a, a button, I believe, uh, within the GoTriple platform uh, next to the profile of your peers where you can request an access to the TBS. So like a, a one click uh, type of solution. Um, that's for uh, onboarding the TBS. Um, the, the other question about the uh, supposed elitism of the, the platform, I don't feel it like that. I think that we are not um, meant to replace other type of solutions. Uh, we just realized that when we connect uh, everyone to anyone, it's not very conducive to trust and that, that creates noise in the network. And that's why you need to come up to uh, with uh, systems, just like to separate the signal from the noise. And then you've got algorithms, but algorithms also have their problems. So um, instead, and again, it's a choice, you know, uh, it's a, a social experiment as well. Uh, we could e either go with like a recommendation system uh, based on alg algorithms, but they're not perfect. Uh, they are biased by uh, design. Uh, here we say, okay, what about using the um, informal knowledge of our peers? Um, because we go to consortium meetings. Uh, at night, we have dinner together. We hear about many different things. Uh, and, and this is a knowledge that's never uh, put into a database. Uh, and again, so it's, it's another way to, uh, to share information and to get in, in touch with people. Uh, one that is more uh, human based, um, because we say that we don't want to reduce people to metrics. Uh, and instead, we want like, to use the informal relationship uh, of people we trust and we know. Um, and again, nothing is perfect. There is always trade offs. Uh, but again, I don't feel that uh, it's meant to be elitist or uh, like you said, uh, the network is semi-private because uh, it's as private as, uh, the, um, as, as your peer make it private. Uh, so yes, it's, it's just like to, to really say, I do have 
people around me and we do have a special connection and these people are in my social wallet so to speak and these people can connect me to other peers that they trust but that i, I don't know yet uh, it's just to give visibility in the network for so, some of your requests that can be easily dispatched in other networks and so in in uh, and, and the aim is to increase efficiency uh while keeping like a human touch to uh, uh, online interactions Thanks a lot. Uh, to your responses, good news is uh, we still have a couple of minutes to continue this discussion and uh, I don't see any uh, hands up, neither in the chat nor uh, regarding your real or virtual hands. Um, so I take my chances to to further reflect uh, on the, like the social side of the service. And I think in line with Alesh, I think another, you know, elephant in the room that you already mentioned on the side is um, why investing in just another social academic social network i have twitter in mind i'm super i mean we are well aware how as you mentioned Gal, all these social networks are biased intransparent um tend to generate people's bubble on bias reproduce people's biases bubbles and the like uh but still i still do believe that um the critical use of Twitter can advance a lot one's career uh, in academia. Even I'm less convinced about LinkedIn, but I can imagine in certain other cases uh, it can come handy as well. So, a first part of my question is how would you relate the trust building systems to these two very established services for academia and social networks? And the second half has to do with. Um, actor groups, target audiences. So I think Carla's input was super inspiring because uh, she just highlighted a very good use case in which trust is really an issue when it comes to, for instance, data exchanges with cultural heritage institutions and scholars uh, or between scholars. So, uh, I can very well imagine um, the, the use of the TBS in such settings, but my worry is that if the target audience is kept very broad and we saw all kinds of input, somebody wants to um, open an office in Brussels, somebody is looking for fellow scholars, yet another somebody is looking for experts in social media. My worry is that this breadth of Imagine target audience can actually be a threat in terms of social uptake. Okay, thank you. I'm going to try to answer uh, quickly to your various points. So the first question was about what's the, um, uh, the difference between uh, the TBS and uh, and, and Twitter and LinkedIn to name them. Uh, Twitter is like an asymmet asymmetric um, uh, network, so you uh, you can follow people. Here in the, on the TBS, you do not follow people. It's like a symmetric uh, relationship. Uh, I, I, we have to be in the same network. Um, so Twitter obviously is much better to disseminate information, um, but uh, we believe that the TBS is better to engage with people. And um, also, uh, Twitter is like uh, is spammed with bots. You don't know if it's a real user or, or an AI. So um, that might be of less concern when you just want to disseminate information about an event. But when you want to engage with someone as a, a consortium partner, uh, then it becomes a, a critical issue. Um, as for LinkedIn, um, LinkedIn is uh, focused on the um, uh, on the past experience, so uh, uh, your CV, uh, basically, and uh, it's really uh, formal and professional oriented, uh, as uh, the TBS is more focused on the network of people who are ready to help you. 
uh, it's much more informal. Uh, and, uh, and which brings me to your next, next question about the uh, broad scope of potential requests uh, that uh, ranges from A to Z and that may be detrimental to, uh, uh, to the, the, the value of the network. And here I would say that um, you can still make groups, uh, specific interest groups, so you can keep your conversation extremely uh, focused on, on particular topics. However, um, I think there is an increasing need, and that's what we uh, uh, understood uh, during our, our various workshops, is that there is an increasing need to connect to other type of stakeholders. Uh, and these people uh, they do not speak the uh, academic language. They've got different uh, type of interest. Uh, and, and you will need, in order to uh, secure funding for your future research, to prove that you can connect to end users and that you can have a positive impact in society. So you need also, as academic people, just like to uh, broaden your own scope of, uh, of interactions. And uh, I think that, uh, therefore, there is, uh, a, there is room uh, for this type of network. And again, yes, it's yet another uh, network, uh, but we believe that uh, if you can just like on one click uh, on board because you already have an account on GoTriple, uh, it might uh, provide some value. And uh, it is a European-based uh, network uh, that satisfies uh, our GPD. Uh, and, um, and yeah, there are not so many uh, European-based social networks. And I think it's important uh, uh, in 2022 uh, to, uh, yes, GDPR. I don't know in French and English, I mix them up. Um, so, and, and social networking is extremely young. I mean, um, it's, it was based on the model that uh, on, on data user extraction. Uh, and now we are uh, with the Web3 and the crypto sphere decentralization. There is like people uh, imagining a new way to organize online relationships. So um, here, the, the trust building system is not based on a business model, it's based on research in social science. And that's why uh, we do have uh, networks that are small uh, because it, it uh, comes from understanding uh, from uh, uh, what social scientists uh, came up with uh, in understanding how we should manage uh, online relationships and uh, online cooperation. Great, thanks a lot, Gail. Uh, very, very interesting insights indeed. And uh, yeah, it will be exciting to see also with my open science hat on how to how a design, like how the development of such a social service unfolds with this, all these ideas of equity and broadness uh, in scientific and, and citizen science discourses in mind. Um, before we head into wrap up, I just want to double check whether you shooted all your questions, comments to the presenters or whether we can move on. We still have just one or two minutes for a last question if you have any, uh, but no worries if uh, that was all. Okay, I think we can move on. And uh, before I open the Mentimeter, uh, which is kind of um, to, for a kind of a feedback round uh, for you attendees, um, as a wrap up, uh, I would just like to invite uh, again uh, for a last question, Gael and Maxime, uh, if you could just um, inform us about the next steps uh, in this development workflow. So what, what's, what to expect? Well, perhaps just before, thanks a lot, Elizabeth, uh, before Gael speaks about the technical development, mm -hmm. we could already you know, repeat that people who are interested to be like early testers can send the email, their own email to Elizabeth, we can then invite them on the network. And from there on, Elizabeth can introduce them to whoever, you know, Gael, me, Paula, Loti, Alicia, who are already on the network. And, uh, you know, the testers today, you know, they posted real requests. So if you want to contribute and, you know, and address your request, feel free to do it, either directly or by joining the trust building system. So that's already feasible and possible right now. And as Gael stated, you know, it's life. It's not at a professional grade. And over the next weeks, months, you know, with technical development, you never really know when it will be ready. We also need to incorporate, you know, today's feedback and various feedbacks from users 
uh, and there I will let Gail complement my answer. Thank you, Maxim. Um, yes. Um, what we would need, uh, what, what you can expe expect, okay, uh, improvements, basically, uh, UX improvements. Uh, right now, you do not receive notifications uh, when some activity uh, happens in your network, so you don't know what's happening and, uh, and, and you miss out on, 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 on stuff. Um, so the user engagement is uh, uh, very low uh, because we are in the process of uh, improving everything every day. Um, we also are going to uh, meet new use cases and new bugs because we uh, will create new situations that didn't happen before. And uh, since it's the first time, it probably uh, won't work properly. So uh, we really need people to uh, help us just like uh, discover these bugs and, and, and so that we can fix them and make it better for the next users. Um, so you can expect a better integration uh, with GoTriple, uh, but GoTriple itself needs to be more developed. Um, and what we would need actually, and that, that would really help us, if you can provide us with some uh, use case, real life use case in your own organization, that you think, okay, this, the TBS could help us uh, reach out to, uh, you know, this type of partners. Uh, and we don't know them, uh, but we might know somebody who, who know them. And so it will, would help us uh, um, with, with the tool. Um, so yes, let us know as well. And uh, we will come back to you, uh, all the people who left their uh, email in the chat, and uh, we will uh, invite you to be the early uh, adopters of the TBS. And we thank you so very much because this is the, uh, the difficult moment when you launch uh, a social network is the, the very first days and weeks and months. So uh, thank you everyone for attending this session and uh, I hope to uh, continue conversation very soon. Thanks a lot to both of you for your excellent presentation and, and uh, um, detailed rich reflections. Uh, just for the record, yes, uh, I've been sending out a couple of invitations already for you who uh, shared uh, your email addresses with me in a private chat. So check your uh, inbox, check probably your uh, spam folder in case as well. And um, by doing so also let, I think uh, now it's time to wrap up our session and please let me invite you, uh, you to contribute to a last exercise for today, which has to do with giving feedback about the session. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, we are doing this as part of a training series and uh, we really do want to uh, make these sessions as interesting, as interactive, as to the point as possible. And you can uh, totally help us uh, in doing so. So this is a usual Mentimeter exercise that we are having. Uh, I hope it will work out smoothly. I copied Mentimeter.com and the Menti code in the chat. And also I'm going to share my screen with you and uh, we can have a look at the results. So please scream aloud if you have any difficulties accessing the Mentimeter. So let me switch to presenter mode and we should be able to see the results as soon as you give me the input. And now I cannot see the chat. So I really encourage you to speak up if you have any issues access. Ah, I see there is something in the chat. Yeah, okay, thanks Lottie for, uh, for the clarification. Of course, this uh, input is uh, fully anonymous, so your honesty and personal integrity is guaranteed. Maxim. Yeah, the, the, the worse the results, the more we can improve. So we are happy with any answer. Because <laughs> we are yes, true that. Uh, not that I not that I see any results. Let let me wait a couple of seconds more and then see what happens. Yes, I think if we have uh, no more than nine people on the menti, then. Uh... 
I After see a few seconds, you can move on, maybe. Okay, yes. If we don't see the number increase. Let me, let me, and I also have to add that I had to import the Mentimeter prepared by Lotti to my personal Menti account, uh, which is, uh, which, which doesn't include the subscription. So that might also be the reason. Okay, but let me move on then uh, for the second question. I'm just... Um, stop sharing the screen, advance the slide, and then reshare it. Um, just a second. So, yes, I can already see some responses here. Okay, so the second question, like the first one was a, was a generic. Ah, oh, yeah, I should have pressed results here. True, true, true. I'm such not a, a big Mentimeter wizard. Um, so the second one has to do with uh, whether the training session met your general expectations. And we are looking forward to hear about that. I've been always thinking about maybe adding some nice music at this part of the webinar would make perfect sense, but uh, maybe not this time. Yes, let's just let's just uh, advance it to the next slide. I try to oops, oops, oops. I try to do this um, smoother than the last time. Yes. So the next question is whether you felt empowered to share your own ideas and questions, whether the environment was inclusive and equitable enough for you to dare to speak up. I think that's, a, that's an especially important one because there are studies out there how the, on how the online environment is sometimes very strongly reproduced in academic power relations, but I won't start philosophizing on that while waiting for your answers. Yeah. Okay, uh, are we ready to move on? I guess so. So the next one is, sorry, the screen sharing and advancing the Mentimeter is not always working out very well, but okay. Give me a second at the end. Okay, uh, the last but one, last but one um, kind of voting type of Mentimeter is whether the, whether you felt the topic relevant to your work. I think we are, many of us are a little bit biased in this respect, uh, having uh, direct connections to the development of this service. So I'm especially turning to our audience in the strict sense in this respect, whether it was relevant to your work, whether you are planning to engage in the future. But do you think, Lotti, can we move on? Probably, yes. Okay. Yeah, I'd say so. Okay, then next question. Uh, this is the last voting type, and then we have an, any other remarks, and then we are good to go with the, with the Mentimeter. Sorry for not being able to present you the results. I know it's much 
um, exciting that way. Uh, whether you're interested in being informed of the coming sessions, and now I'm to, we are talking about the, tweet, uh, the, the triple um, open science training session series. So just as a reminder to you, there are, oh, and people are still entering the waiting room, okay. <laughs> so uh, just as a reminder, uh, we are two upcoming events, one about multilingual vocabularies and another one about uh, the Pandit annotation tool. Um, you can visit the website of the Triple Open Science Training Series um, to keep yourself in the loop. Okay. And the last thing, uh, the last uh, Mentimeter slide is absolutely just a free, um, this is the freestyler to finish with, whether you have any other remarks apart from next time the moderators should be able to present the results of the Mentimeter, obviously. <laughs> you are free to add comments here. Leave you a couple of couple of minutes to that to think about. Okay, uh, so we are going to leave the Mentimeter open if you need a little bit more time after closing the webinar. But uh, without any further ado, let me just say a big, big thank you once again uh, to our two presenters, Kyle and Maxi, to our tester team, um, and also uh, to uh, my colleague Lottie Provost for the preparation outreach of uh, editing and so on work uh, around this webinar. We are really, really encourage you to stay in touch both uh, with the developer team of the trust building system and join the testing community. And on the other hand, also to uh, follow up on um, the, the webinar series, uh, the open science, the, the triple open science webinar series. And Yes, uh, have a lovely rest of the afternoon, I would say, and see you probably next time.